child awardee for this evening and the second for the Distinguished Alumni Award. It's somebody that I'm sure we all love very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce the winner, Mr. Peter Gregory Obi. I'm sure we can do better than that for Peter. Mr. Peter Gregory Obi, Honorary Special Advisor to the President on Finance and member of the country's economic management team, is the immediate past executive governor of Anambra State. <laughs> Mr. Obi attended Christ the King College, Onicha, and graduated from the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, with a bachelor's degree in philosophy. He has attended several executive programs at top business schools in Nigeria and abroad, including Harvard Business School and Kellogg Graduate School of Management, USA. <clears throat> he is an alumnus of Lagos Business School, having attended the chief executive program, CEP 11, in 2002. Mr. Peter Obi is a thoroughbred professional and fellow of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. <laughs> he has excelled both in private enterprise and public service and had at various times been the chairman Fidelity Bank PLC, chairman Guardian Express Mortgage Bank Limited, chairman Paymaster PLC, to, men to mention just a few. As governor, he was elected vice chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum and chairman Southeast Governors Forum, amongst numerous other federal government appointments. <clears throat> Recently honored as the outstanding Igbo man of the decade by the champion newspaper, <clears throat> Mr. Obi, is credited with introducing fundamental changes in Nigerian politics and is remembered for the following achievements while in office. Exemplary commitment to reforms and development, building relationships between Anambra State and other countries such as USA, Britain, Russia, European Union, Belgium, Israel, Venezuela, and others attracted big Fortune 500 companies like SAB Miller, Distel, and GlaxoSmithKline, Nemeth Pharmaceuticals, etc., to Anambra State. <clears throat> Under him, Anambra State was rated the least indebted state in Nigeria by the Debt Management Office. Anambra was adjudged by the Federal Ministry of Works, the state with the best network of roads in the country, having asphalted over 800 kilometers of roads. He reopened long closed schools and returned missionary schools to the original owners with a grant of six billion naira for their rehabilitation distributing over 30,000 computers, internet access, Microsoft academies to over 500 schools. <clears throat> Anambra State students, for the first time, achieved first place nationwide in the 2013 WAEC and NECO Common Entrance Examinations. <clears throat> it provided 700 buses to secondary schools in the state, and provided boreholes to over 300 schools. He also built classroom blocks in all the 177 communities in the state. He ensured the payment of over 35 billion naira in outstanding pensions and gratuities in the state since 1999. Before he became governor, no single health institution was accredited in the state. But under his administration, 10 schools of nursing 
midwifery, and medical technology, as well as two hospitals were accredited. <laughs> Mr. Peter Obi stands for justice and fairness and was the first Nigerian governor to reclaim his governorship mandate after three years in the court, giving confidence to others to pursue their stolen mandates. He's also the first governor in Anambra state to serve for two terms since democratic rule in 1979. Perhaps Mr. Peter Obi's greatest legacy in office was his financial prudence. He funded development projects without borrowing money from financial institutions, nor raising bonds. And he handed over to his successor, Mr. Willie Obiano, also an alumnus of LBS, the sum of 75 billion naira in the form of cash local foreign investments. In a recent testimony, the Anglican Bishop of the Diocese of Amici, Right Reverend E. O. Ikako, spoke glowingly of Mr. Peter Obi while advising his successor, Mr. Willie Obiano, to tow his checkered steps. Mr. Obi is a native of Amatutu village, Agulu, Anaucha, LGA of Anambra State, and he's married to Margaret with two children. For contributing in an outstanding way to the development of Anambra State and Nigeria, for contributing in building an oasis of sanity and expanding the ideas of what is possible and what can be done in the society, setting new standards in the process, and for reflecting the ideals of the school both in private and public service, Mr. Peter Gregory Obi is hereby being honored with the Lagos Business School Distinguished Alumni Award. By special request, I'd like to invite the Dean, Lagos Business School, Dr. Naso Konedo, to please join the President in giving the award to Mr. Peter B. Can we please clap for the Dean as she comes up? Thank you, photographers. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Peter B will say a few words. Okay. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I was just saying that the other people didn't say anything. <laughs> I wonder why they want me to say something. Let me, mine will be just gratitude. Number one is gratitude to Lagos Business School for what they are doing and their contribution in building a better country. <clears throat> Number two is gratitude to the association for what they are doing. And number three is same gratitude to all of you who are gathered here I'm sure you're helping to build a better Nigeria. Thank you for this night. But in doing so, let me, when they were reading, they always said I left 75 billion. I always like to correct it whenever people say that. We didn't borrow because I saw when they talked about nobody, we didn't borrow from the bank and no bond was issued, nobody clapped because it was bad business for most people here. <laughs> we didn't borrow because we, we know we, it would be difficult for us to pay back. Some states are borrowing because they can pay back. But for me, the reason why we didn't borrow is that we needed to first, I always say, people always say, 
what is your greatest achievement in Alhambra State? I always say to them, bringing civility and order in governance. It is not about, uh, it's not about infrastructure. It's not about infrastructure. It's not about this or that. The bringing order in governance is more critical. Some of you might not know that the greatest problem we face is not just corruption, but even in discipline and irresponsibility of office holders. There's nowhere in the world you see somebody who is supposed to be a custodian of the law, breaking the law consistently, except in this country. Because he makes sure he jumps the queue if other people are keen. He makes sure he does everything that is wrong. So for me, doing that was the most critical thing. Let me plead with all of you this night. Whenever people talk about you, all of you are being to good schools. I always have friends like you who tell me about Singapore and this and that. And what I tell them that if you go to Singapore, and that's the only example I'll use, the best people are in government. The best brain is in government. I plead with all of you, as you enjoy and do whatever you do in your good office and everything, please do not leave governance to the least in the society. That's what we are doing today. The role models we have in government are the least in the society. And all of us are complaining. There's no way we won't complain. There's no way. People say to me, how were you able to save money? It was very simple. All we did was to shut down the cost of governance. In eight years, I never had a governance lodge in Abuja. Why should I have it? I don't live in Abuja. It's not necessary. As a governance lodge in Lagos, you can go and see it. I lived it for 25 years. I don't live in Lagos. Why should we have governance office in Lagos? In one, in one year alone, we cut the cost of gov governance travel by 80%. Why? When they invite me to Abuja for a meeting, I'm the only person invited. Why should I go with 30 other people who nobody invited? And they have no reason to be there. And that's what is happening. You don't need to go too far. No, it's, it's, it's important that you know that. That is what is their problem. The cost. I have to pay for 30 people nobody invited for the meeting. They constitute a nuisance to the traveling public at the airport. I go to the hotel and pay for them. And you know, because they're idle, they eat more. Because they have nothing they're doing. Why should I pay for them? And that was the cost. And it's important that if you people get involved, because when people say, they say, where did you get the money from? We didn't get the money from anywhere. We had 11, 12 governors guest house when I started. I shut all of them down. I'm a married man. If I finish work, I go home. There's no reason why I should go to guest house. Because he's the governor. The governor has to live an exemplary life. It's important that you people, the reason why I'm saying this is for you to get involved. I give you one example that saved us over half a billion naira. Obasanjo was to visit Anambra State. In my tunnel, he has phoned me. He's there and they said, ah, I have to build pre president's, uh, what, the presidential lodge. I said, the president doesn't live in Anambra State. Why should I build a lodge for him? By the time I know it, they have directed somebody who had a ready package contract of half a billion naira. I said, we will build the house. Within six months, you will complete it. I said, not as long as I'm here. You're not going to build this place. The president can come in the morning and go in the evening. He doesn't have to sleep here. He doesn't have to sleep here, and I'm not going to do it. When the president phoned me directly, when Ambassador said, yes, he must sleep in Anambra State, I went to him. I said, Mr. President, it's very simple. I have a lodge as a governor. In my bed, everything is there. What I'm going to do, I went to his people. Let me vacate this place for one month. For you people, you stay here. When you go, I come back. I don't need to build a new house. 
And believe me, they accepted my, my own position, but took my keys for one week. I asked my wife, listen, carry everything out. We'll go one week, let them stay here. He slept in my own bedroom and everything. And one week we spent in a hotel in Oka, 120,000 naira. That would have cost us half a million naira. Why are we going to do it? We don't need a lunch. Because when people say it, when people say, they say, how did you do it? We shut down the cost of everything. And I can say to you, I said people, banker here, I have in us, an Anambra State, the day I left, today, not even today I left, have at least $50 million. I didn't say Naira, in Access Bank. They have at least $56 million in Fidelity Bank, and they have at least $50 million in Diamond Bank. Because we said we will save our money. We don't need to. But I'm saying all of you here can do it. There's enough money in this country. The responsibility, waste is too much. The greed is too high. It's only, this is the only country where people like me in office wants to own everything in the world. It is not so. You don't need to. You can serve your people, reduce your greed, and produce maximum. So please, I urge all of you, the part of building, the part of building this country, you can do it. I've handed over to one of you. And like I told him the day I handed over, I spent my time, I spent my energy, I spent whatever little savings I have to make sure that he is the governor. He started well. Everybody listened to me the day I handed over to him. I have no agreement with him. I have nothing with him. The only thing I have with him is, please build a better future for the children of Anambra State. Give them a better life. All of you here can participate. Go to your various walls, your various communities, in various ways, and help us to build. Nobody can build this country. We have no other country except this one. Nobody can do it. Not the people who are there today. I'm happy Ben is there. Let me tell you, the characters of the people that are there cannot change it. They cannot build it. So if you want to stay here and think that Oh, they will change it. No, 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 no. They will not change it. I always tell people that when I went to Anambra State, it was a case of where lunatics were in charge of the asylum. I needed to put them back to the asylum and build a better place for the society. So you can do it and you can change it. So collectively, please, when you go back to your ha homes this night, look at your children. When you look at your children, you make up your mind. We must stop this abuse of our country. Otherwise, the society we are abused today will take its revenge on our children tomorrow. Let us build a better place for them. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.